so far. All right, just to review, too, some direct Greek stocks that trade in the United States that could be affected by this. The National Bank in Greece, of course, no surprise, down north of 18 percent. Dry ships, they're a big shipbuilding concern. You always hear this talk about Greek uh, shipping magnets like Aristotle and Nassus, that sort of thing from way back. They're down about 7 percent. Sea Energy Maritime in the similar venue, down about 8 percent. Greek ETFs of various size and quantities down anywhere from 16 to 20 percent. The European Stock Index itself has a broadly traded ETF down north of 4 percent. So these are relatively limited, but contain losses in some specific issues, again, unique to Greece. What is the fallout for us? It, it comes back to uh, states, municipalities. You can extend it to anyone here in this country who have incurred expenses they can't pay, and there's no one to provide the money to them or for them. That fallout could be fast and severe. Bobby Jindal, the presidential candidate on the wire, is right now saying this could happen to us. Jerry Willis, Lizzie McDonald, Gary B. Smith on that fallout. Jerry, what do you think? Well, I have to tell you, for American investors who are invested in Greece through ETFs, mutual funds, the hit is not big. $3.7 billion of American money in Greece. But to the extent that it hurts European economies and especially their stock and bond markets, $1.2 trillion is the amount of money that Americans have invested in those markets through mutual funds and ETFs. So, Which is why the broader European index funds and all the they were feeling that pinch. Ab that, absolutely yeah. right. So there is an impact here. Americans will feel it in their 401ks. But the Greek exposure, not so big. Not so big. The fear is, I guess, all the time, Lizzie, that others drop and, and, and that others feel the same heat. And I'm wondering now, given the news out of Puerto Rico, that it's 70 billion in debt, it can't repay it. It's going to look for repayment schedules with sympathetic American lenders. There are a host of states that have unfunded liabilities as well here in this country. Yeah, this could be big. It, it could be big. And, it, and it, we have to tell ourselves, watch out, U.S. Banks could be exposed to Puerto Rico. Why? You look at the Dodd-Frank bill. Remember the Dodd-Frank bill was enacted to clean up after the financial crisis. Well, guess what debt was exempted? In other words, the Volcker rules said, you know, you, you banks, you can continue to trade in rotten Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac debt. And you can also continue to trade in your proprietary trading desk in Puerto Rico debt. So that's an issue, too, for U.S. banks that we don't know if the hedge funds or, or any of the market makers, how much they have in Puerto Rican debt and how much the U.S. bank are exposed to Puerto Rico. Jeremy Smith, we're going to be flashing up here just to look at bank-related stocks and how they've been doing. Obviously, not surprisingly, poorly today on this news. I'm surprised not more poorly, but the fear seems to be, and Paul Volcker was here just a couple of weeks ago saying, you know, those states and their unfunded liabilities, to Lizzie's point, that's our ticking time bomb. A lot of states have the, its own balanced budget uh, thing they have to do every year, but they can do it through a variety of shifty means. And now the shift has hit the fan. What do you think? Exactly. I, I guess, Neil, there's always a fear in the market of what we don't know. And I think that's why you're seeing a fairly good sell off. But I kind of I'm on the flip side of what Lizzie is saying. You know, we went through Detroit. We went through a couple cities in uh, California. We went through New York City, all financial crises, and yet we've weathered all of them. I guess if you're talking on a massive scale, you know, in a, the entire state of California or the, you know, the, the, the state of Virginia or something like that. But I, I just don't see us getting there. And, well, you know, even Detroit, as big as it was, what, about one-eighth yeah. or one-ninth one the size of Puerto Rico, we seem to, they defaulted and everyone kind of moved on. So and I don't want to be a Pollyanna, no, but I right you. now I, I, I'd i be a buyer rather than a seller. I hear market. you. And no small irony that the Detroit metro area's GDP is about the size of Greece's. But listen, no. we also have been living in an era where we've had really loose monetary policy that has helped governments here in the United States and certainly club fed around the world. They have helped governments uh, basically not uh, basically outrun the math on entitlement spending, outrun the math on their gargantuan welfare states. And, you know, the fact that the, the Fed, it's, uh, the Federal Reserve and central banks are painting into a corner. That's what the Bank of International Settlement says. What can they do next when now will we really finally see the serious restructuring taking place because they're out of the Federal Reserve and central banks are out of bullets? Um, Jerry, longer term, I mean, you know the feeling there seems to be that these stocks are going to get hit and hit hard. Uh, Greece is all but kicked out of the air unless something miraculous happens. Um, the feeling seems to be, well, let Greece go then. The Germans aren't budging. The French aren't budging. Uh, they hope that, that, that Greece comes back with its senses and signs on to a deal. 
I don't think that's going to happen. It's certainly not a real way. Then the fear is you get a Portugal. Then the fear is you get a Spain. Then the fear is you get a France, you know, and on and on. I think that's the big danger is that other countries are impacted and even leave the euro. But let's say that doesn't happen. Let's just say their markets go to heck in a handbasket. Right. That's a disaster, too, for American investors because they have so much money in these European markets. Look, couldn't we just take a simple lesson here? We have uh, our de national debt is at $18 trillion. Shouldn't we be looking at this as, as an example in front of us that we should be you know avoiding? You I got concerned about someone said, well, it can never happen here because we can print our own money. <laughs> I mean, that that is hardly a salvation. Right. We can also wallpaper, you know, right. our walls with our money. But, you know, I mean, I think we, we look at Italy and Charlie Gaswinder just made this and Jerry, been making this point, we don't know really where the exposure is to those countries like Italy with right. its vaudeville politics and, you know, other countries in Europe. Who are you Europe. calling vaudeville politics? <laughs> <laughs> Irish. Did you bring up my Irish? They don't have vaudeville well, politics. Well, you know what? Guess what? Ireland cut taxes. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. All right. uh, so that's the deal. And again, I can't stress <laughs> enough, folks. I mean, imagine if you tried to get money out of your bank. It was closed. You couldn't access it at your ATM. That is happening uh, right now in Greece. It last time happened in Cyprus two years ago. That dragged on a while. They really never got their act together. It was just switching, you know, Greek tragedies, if you will. So we are still at this game where it happens. And it's happened in Mexico. It has happened in Iceland and Thailand, in Malaysia and in Indonesia, in Argentina. I can tell you, it never ends well or the same. The idea is to control money leaving your country. Forget about that. Imagine any money even trying to go into that country. Ain't happening. More.